All right, another excellent opportunity for us to talk about DTG, DTG printing, the Epson F2100. Uh, I'm surrounded by uh, an amazing group. Uh, we've got uh, Roy Huseman, who is our senior technician, and we have Terry Combs, also one of our senior trainers, lead reps here at Equipment Zone. So this is a, 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 an opportunity for me to brag about these two guys before we jump into the webinar. Thrilled to have so many of you tuned in today. Uh, yes, we are, at, we are recording, as you know, because you heard the, uh, the announcement, but we are recording the session. You can watch it again later. It will be on our YouTube page. But I just want to talk a little bit about how we got to this point. And then I'm going to turn it over to, to the experts, Terry and Roy. Um, oftentimes in our Facebook group and on other platforms, we hear things like, you know, why is this happening? And why does it look this way? What did I do wrong? And so we thought, you know, we, we hear this a lot, specifically Roy and other techs that we have. Uh, we do, by the way, have four other technicians in, in New Jersey. And uh, they often hear about these things. And, and so we thought, well, let's see what we could do to, to, you know, show some of the processes and share some of the solutions. And so that's what we're really planning to do today. Um, and uh, thank you to everyone, Trevor, for saying Roy's helped me in the past, and he greatly appreciates it. So shout out to Roy and others, the rest of our team for sure. Um, I'm going to share my screen, and then I'll turn the audio off for me and the video off for me. So again, as I said, you can let these two gentlemen take the, uh, uh, the discussion forward. But truly, this is about potential solutions. This is about looking at some examples, letting Terry and Roy explain maybe how we got into that, how someone maybe painted themselves into the corner, um, and then what some of the solutions could be so that we can avoid these things. And I know that this is probably going to spawn a lot of questions. I'll do my best. I am not the lead technician at Equipment Zone. We will keep a record of it. And if there gets to be a deep question, we'll follow up after the fact and hopefully answer some of your questions via email uh, directly. So Roy and Matt, Terry, May I interject one quick sec? Why if would there I say is no any now? question, <laughs> yeah, any questions, it might even be better if it's something that's real entailed to just go to our website and go to tech support and open up a tech ticket. And that way someone could get back to you and review whatever it is that you're, you know, wondering about yeah. or how we can help you uh, solve an issue that you're having. That's, a that's really the best way rather than trying to go back email later on, because at least we have a record. It's in our database. Right. And someone will definitely get back. I to love you. that. Thank you, Roy, for clarifying that. And also for those of you that are tuned in live, we are going to follow through with our presentation and probably not be able to deviate to your specific question live in the moment, unless it's very relative to what's being taught. So please be patient with us. We're not ignoring you if you have raised your hand or if you chat something specific. Um, hopefully I'll be able to reply while these two get going. But I also want you to see this. This is just the introduction. So, so I forgot to say, you know, why do my prints look like this? What am I doing wrong? Terry, how often do you hear that at a trade show with people who walk by and say, help? Oh, absolutely. It's a constant thing, Jay. And uh, and we, of course, uh, can usually steer you in the right direction. If, it, you know, real quick example, somebody was saying, I've done everything right. My prints look horrible. I, I'm using the Epson pre-treat and, and you're mixing it two to one, right? No, no. Uh, I read online, you mix eight parts water to one part pre-treat. Well, there it is. There's, <laughs> and, and this person was struggling, struggling, struggling. And it, it's like something that Roy said yesterday. And I thought was really, really important as we were just kind of chatting. And, and uh, when somebody asks a question online, folks are real quick to say, here's the problem. Here's the solution. Here's the problem. It, without uh, looking at the big, big picture. And, and Roy talks about you know, it could be a few different things. And, and let's talk about what you're doing in your process. And, and in that scenario, he would have said, okay, stop right there. Stop right there. It, it, there is the root of your problem. No amount of adding more white ink or anything else is going to fix the problem that you are pre-treating incorrectly. And and as we were discussing yesterday and, and talking about, okay, which ones are we going to attack first? What did we decide? Let's just talk about pre-treat issues today because exactly. that seems a bit like a big tripping point for folks. 
I love it. I uh-huh. love it. It was fun for us to kind of get that out of the way. I also want to brag on us just a little bit before I final turn it over to you. Largest DTG training and tech support as far as we are aware. So we're pretty proud of that. I'm not going to dislocate my shoulder, patting myself on the back. True shout out to our, <laughs> to our, to our tech team though, because uh, you know we're dedicated to this and we want to make sure um, we're constantly testing. We're constantly evolving. This is a moving art and science. Um, so uh, it's important that we do our best to stay uh, tuned up. And uh, the other thing I'm proud of is that we're going to offer free phone support and free email support. As Roy mentioned, you can go to our website right now if you have a very, very specific, uh-huh. unique situation and start a tech ticket. Um, even if you didn't buy from us, we want to try to make sure that we can be, uh-huh. you know, the hero for the day, at least, <laughs> and give you uh-huh. some uh, insights as to what's possibly going on. So if you do that, as long as um, you can, you know, help us help you, right? We need all of the information, but we're pretty yep. proud of the exactly. fact that we're here for the industry. Um, and then finally, if you didn't already hear Harry, and Terry uh, allude to this, over 100 DTG training videos now, are, and, and some of our great DTG specific interviews are available on our YouTube channel, like this one will be. So gentlemen, I'm going to turn it over to you. Um, I'm, I'm listening in. I'll be advancing some of the screens, as you both know. Um, this hopefully will become a new series, the DTG Tech Talk. And uh, so uh, take it away, gentlemen. All right. Well, so Roy, right. uh, you know, you, uh, um, Jay said that at trade shows, and we haven't done very many trade shows in the last two years, as you guys well know, <laughs> <laughs> we, yeah. we would certainly get the folks who make a beeline to our booth and say, Hey, uh-huh. I, I didn't, I didn't buy my 2100 from you, but what am I doing wrong? And they've, <laughs> they've got uh-huh. that shirt in their hands. And, exactly. and so, so you and all of our techs back in New Jersey, you, you talk every day to these folks. Uh, I'm sure lots of the questions are exactly the same thing. So uh, it, it's usually fairly easy for you guys to diagnose what the issue is and say, okay, here's what you need to do to resolve this issue for, for uh-huh. this um, particular situation. And as I mentioned uh, today, let's talk a little bit about pretreat issues. And and uh, Roy, I know you've got some examples, but uh, the the first thing we want to talk about is um, is the uh, not using enough pretreat. And um, the you know often uh, uh, when people are online, it's uh, it's either too much, too little. What's the perfect amount? So, talk to us a little bit about not using enough pretreat when you uh, when you are pretreating your shirts and go on to print. Okay. Well, basically, it really depends on the fabrics. Obviously, the more porous the fabric, the more pretreat. We did a webinar uh, a couple months ago, finding the right amount of pretreat for a specific product. And we compared Next Level, Bella Canvas, Gildan. Uh, so it's a great resource to go back to. But we're trying to do more of a troubleshooting on this one. So in reference to that aspect, uh, if you're having an issue with pretreat, you're going to see the shirt appear through the fabric, typically, okay, uh, when you're laying your white base down. Uh, part of that could uh, have to do with the the weave of the fabric as well. So the more coarse open weave of the fabric, uh, the more pretreat is gonna be required. It's kind of like a waffle versus a pancake. If I pour syrup on pancake, it's gonna cover a lot more surface area with less syrup, but on a waffle, I gotta cover those ridges down in the valleys and actually pretty much fill up that space because when the white ink comes down, if it hits an area of the fabric, there's no pretreat, it's going to penetrate into the fabric and disappear, especially on dark colors. And you're not going to even see the ink. So potentially you'll see a white base that has a bunch of pinholes in it where you can see the fabric through if you have a scenario like that. So that's one of the things to look out for. The other is one of the things that we've talked about a lot is uh, what is residual in the fabric. Some of the manufacturers are doing an enzyme wash or an after wash of some sort after they dye uh, the fabric, which involves chemicals and dyes. And some of these chemicals and dyes have contaminants that are going to repel the water and create issues uh, on some of these shirts as well. So, you know, notorious products out there, the bigger manufacturers like Gildan, if you buy a hundred shirts for an order, you could get potentially four or five different countries that those shirts came from. 
and each one of those countries, the shirt's going to perform differently. The color is going to look slightly different. So kind of just covering that issue. So pre-treat the correct amount is paramount to start with. And then we go to the curing part of it. The other thing is what we'll see on some of the fabrics is uh, with this in mind, when you're actually dyeing them, the equipment could be having issues where drops of oil or something could be actually falling off of the equipment onto the fabric as it's going through and creating little splotches and spots here and there on some of the products that you're going to see through the print process that you automatically assume it's something having to do with the equipment when it isn't. Well, you know, Roy, in, in, in other types of decorating, uh, maybe cut vinyl or screen printing, it doesn't tell on you so much. So uh, I, I think that uh, people who are already in the industry doing decorating don't necessarily appreciate the importance of, of the pre-treating in the process. And l let me add to that, you know, we have people, and I, I'm sure you hear this all the time. So how many grams of pre-treat do I uh, mm -hmm. need on this garment? So what I'm hearing you say is, it's relative. It depends. It depends yeah. on the garment. It's going to require you mm -hmm. to do some testing. Yeah, exactly. Whether it's grams or a dial doesn't really matter. You're still going to decide how much more pre-treat you're going to need. So going back to years ago, as we have evolved, we become more intelligent with the process. So people back in the day would say, oh, you just need 28 to 32 grams on a t-shirt. Well, that may not be true because some t-shirts may require more than 32 grams. And the other thing is, are you weighing the shirt correctly? I hear, you know, if you got someone back east on a summer day, that shirt's going to have moisture in it. So once you pre-treat it, cure it, you're pulling all that moisture out, then you're going to weigh it. Well, you need to heat press it first to pull the moisture out of the base area of the shirt before you weigh it to get a more accurate gram weight. So keep that in mind if you're going to be focusing on the gram portion. Like our good friends focusing uh, on the dial. Dane Clement uh, from Great Dane Graphics <laughs> down there in uh, down there in New Orleans. Uh, he's got to do maybe a double uh, heat press to uh, get the moisture out of that shirt. But yeah. uh, so so um, Roy, one of the uh, well, Cornet they they and and I always have people say, hey, do you have a machine that you can pre-treat in the printer? Uh, a lot of drawbacks to that, obviously, because pre-treat has a lot of salt in it, and salt inside of your machine, uh, salt water inside of your machine is not a not a not a great thing. But for a mere six hundred thousand dollars, you can have a Cornet printer that pre-treats while you are. Um, while you are uh, printing. So talk uh -huh. to us a little bit about that undercured pre-treat, basically printing on a damp shirt. Yeah, well, basically with the Cornet process, it's a wet process. So the ink is designed to run through a wet process. It's not going to expand. So if I were to take a, a shirt that's 100% dry and I'm gonna drop a microscopic droplet of ink with a eyedropper. When it hits that fabric, if I have the right amount of pretreat, that barrier is now created with it being dry. It's going to sit on the surface, allow for the water and the ink to penetrate and create that bond with the fabric. If that pretreat layer is moist, then that water is going to penetrate quicker and is going to pull some of that ink through with it into the fabric. And then once it hits the fabric layer, it starts to blot and expand, which a lot of people I've talked to, oh, I'm not putting my mat on it because I get white ink going through my shirt all the time. Well, that's the pre-treat issue. You shouldn't have any white because the other thing that's telling me is I'm compensating by upping my white, increasing my cost possibly increasing my production time because I got so much white, I got to put pauses and I got all this stuff going on at the printer. So to maximize your print speed, and the reason why Epson came out with the grip pad is to speed up production. So you definitely want to use it to your advantage by doing everything correct uh, from the pre-treat to the cure to get it onto the printer. That way you don't have to worry about that ink penetrating through onto there or onto the, even the plexiglass or the back of the inside layer of fabric. That should never be happening. Okay, and that's 100% pre-treat that causes that. So Roy, you, what, you're, what you're saying then is 
um, I, I've, I'm trying to, trying to print on this shirt that's not completely dry to compensate or to put a Band-Aid on it. I'm just adding yeah. more white ink. So, yeah. and, 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 you know, right back to the beginning of our conversation, so much of what you read on the internet is, is it's, it's offered up in good faith, but mm -hmm. a lot of times it's a Band-Aid because somebody's yeah. found a workaround because they couldn't figure out what they did at step one. Mm -hmm. So at step five, they put a Band-Aid on it. And here's the fix I found yeah. rather yeah. than going back to step one. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. Exactly, exactly. I think the best way to sum that up would be, would you jump out of a plane with a parachute that has a potential malfunction? Possibly not. But when it comes to the DTG process, we're always trying to go with something that's not going to possibly work and try to make it work and say, oh, I got a fix for this. When in essence, there's really no fix. We're just doing a workaround and is that workaround really working or are we increasing our production time and cost, which defeats the purpose at the end of the day. Not only that, but the quality may not be what my customer ends up expecting because the product just isn't working right. So, Yeah, and, and uh, to go on record, uh, not jumping out of a plane with any type of parachute. That's <laughs> <laughs> just in case anybody was wondering yeah so exactly okay so the next thing i want to talk about and and you know i see these um like if i see a quote from someone else um mm -hmm. it'll say teflon sheet uh, yes. we'll have customers who say oh i don't need silicone coated parchment paper i'm just going to yeah. use teflon talk to us uh -huh. a little bit about curing pre-treat using teflon compared to a silicone treated parchment paper Okay, well, one of the issues that I've seen on the internet uh, is either residual drops of oil on the fabrics or the other thing that causes something uh, that happens kind of like that would be Teflon. Running at hot temperatures, uh, what you actually do is boil the pretreat at the fabric level because that Teflon traps the moisture in. So when you're opening your heat press, you pull your Teflon sheet, it's just filled with water moisture on the bottom of the sheet. That's telling me I got a ton of water still in my fabric as well. Now, if I have any areas where that pre-treat was compromised because it got too hot, it boiled a little bit, you're gonna have little splotches because that pre-treat isn't gonna do its job. It's been compromised. So that's one thing to keep in mind. With the silicone infused parchment paper, uh, which is what I feel is the only product to use. Uh, it doesn't stick to the fabric, pulling fibers back up, which can be an issue. The other thing is, is it does a great job pulling the moisture to that paper layer and wicking it out to the outer perimeter of the heat press. Now, obviously, if I'm pre-treating in a day in advance to compensate again for some fabrics or things that go wrong in my pre-treat process, uh, then... You know, some people don't need to worry about that because if my shirt's 100% dry and I repress it to pull the moisture out, I typically do that without a parchment paper at all. I just let the platen pull it out versus uh, wasting a parchment piece of parchment paper or, you know, in introducing that as an extra step. You know, Roy, I think the, uh, the, the really, really simple explanation of of, of drying pretreat or curing water-based ink. So basically water in both those products is to allow that water to evaporate. So that's the, that's the thing you have to understand about it is that water has to evaporate for this to be done properly. Um, it, it just like when you're, when you're printing uh, with that ink that, and, and even screen printers who print with water-based ink, the way you cure water-based ink isn't necessarily reaching temperature, it is evaporating the water from the ink. So that, that's that's the explanation we need to know. So, uh, and most yeah. importantly, we don't want to use tep. Did your mic cut out? Uh, yes, I, sorry. Oh, okay. I said, most importantly, uh, we don't want to use Teflon. Yeah, exactly, definitely. The other thing is, is and this is something I'm gonna interject. When I do training, uh, to new customers that have never done this before. What I tell them is let's take the heat press and the pre-treat out of the equation as far as issues that are coming up. First thing, my heat press, 
for us, when we do trade shows or whatever, we might be throwing all different types of shirts through it. And uh, I always see on our Facebook, and I'm not trying to pinpoint anybody, but if you're going to take your process and stop at any point and just sit here and stand, you're, you're stopping production, okay? And at the end of the day, the more shirts I get out, the more money I make, okay? And this is already a time uh, consuming process, you know, as it is, as far as DTG. So as far as new customers, I tell them, set your pre press. If you got a good press like this one, uh, 333 degrees, a pressure of two. If you have a pressure gauge, which is light pressure, 90 second cure time. Cause that's what's required for the ink for dark colors. And a if I do any shirt, no matter whose it is, Gildan, and I put more pre-treat, I do a Cotton Heritage, a Bella Canvas, a Next Level, 90 seconds is going to cure any shirt. Now, some people will say, well, I don't want it to sit in there that long because that may slow things down. It's taking more time if I stand in front of here doing 10-second intervals or 20-second intervals or 30 seconds and then 10 seconds uh, intervals until the shirt is dry. I mean, I'm babysitting the heat press at that point and I can't work my production. And I guarantee you, if I pre-treat a shirt, put it on the heat press, cure it, put it on the printer, hit print, come back, pre-treat that next shirt or back while this is curing the first shirt, I've already got my second shirt ready to cure. Got that on here. Before you know it, I'll have a stack of five or six shirts that are ready to keep feeding that printer. When that printer stops printing, I got to feed it. If I don't, my production's completely stopped at that point. So I want to make sure that I follow that process. And if I take the heat press out of the equation until I'm comfortable and I know what I'm doing, I've decided what products I'm going to sell that work well. Okay. That's the other thing, getting back to what we were talking about before. Not all products are going to print well for various reasons. So... Well, and, and I love the fact that you that you say, hey, on the front end, cut out all the variables. Um, yeah. Make sure that that you simplify the process so that, uh, you know, because I'm sure, Roy, when people call you up and they say, OK, well, on the Internet, it told me to do 10 seconds and then 15 seconds and then 10 seconds and take it out mm -hmm. and shake it and turn it around. Yeah, and <laughs> exactly. It, 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 Blow on it. It, 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 so it's hard it's magic to, <laughs> it is hard to troubleshoot if people are, yeah. are 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 trying experimenting with all different things at the same time i think that's what you're saying exactly exactly all right so, so and that, uh, I, I did i did want to mention that one of our upcoming uh, webinars we're going to be doing we're going to uh talk a little bit about comparing the uh, different types of uh, of uh, pretreatment. I don't want to give away any uh, any of the the secrets that we've discovered, but I just wanted to point that out. And I see Jay has on the screen there uh, the Teflon versus silicone parchment paper as well. I don't know if you want to comment yeah. more on that, Roy. Yeah, if you looked at the circles on there, you could see how the white uh, is been compromised. You see that red splotch there. Now, as we watch this print, you could see that before it actually, we printed with a highlight white. So it put down a little bit more white and it was definitely more apparent on the first pass of white. So if you're running in level four uh, that doesn't have the highlight white, you would definitely see it a lot worse than it's showing here. And obviously some colors are going to allow for you to see more of that happening with the splotchiness and things of that nature as well. And that could also be an oil contaminant uh, that dropped on the shirt. I always see people saying, oh, well, I printed, uh, pre-treated, cured, and printed the shirt, and I, I got these little gray or brown spots that are appearing around the image. You know, those are contaminants in the fabric. That's the one thing to, to keep in mind. Unless that fabric was washed after the dyeing process, there's chemicals and dyes in it, okay? Or what they call, you know, they have a, a term for it. And I don't know, I'm just trying to keep it in layman's terms anyway. Uh, so it's easier to understand. But when it comes to the higher quality products, a lot of them go through an afterwash to pull all that out. Uh, prior to cutting and sewing the fabric into whatever blank it's going to be. 
Well, and Roy, unlike most other types of decorating, the garment you choose, and we've talked about this many times, the garment you choose has a huge impact on the quality of that print. You know, just to say 100% cotton, as I always tell people, 100% cotton is your yeah. best friend, but there's more yeah. to it than that. Can you talk a little yeah. bit about, about the different products that that are going to impact even among 100% cotton fabrics? Yeah, well, the 100% cotton fabrics, we have the different types of weaves, which we have presented in other webinars with pictures and things of that nature. But the easiest way to explain it would be if you got your cotton cores, you got your regular cotton, and you got your ring spun cotton and comb ring spun cotton. The way I look at it is a cotton core is like a piece of yarn. OK, if I'm going to knit a sweater, OK, it, it, with a magnifying glass, that's what my shirt's going to look like. If I have a standard cotton shirt, I would look at it as a uh, a roll of twine. OK, very abrasive. Your standard cotton shirt is really abrasive. OK, it's not very soft at all. You go to a ring spun cotton. That's the kind of person that woke up in the morning and their hair is all frizzy. They're going to comb it out and put it in a braid. OK, you're going to have a few hairs sticking out, but you've got that uh fiber contained so to speak and a ring sp or combed ring spun would be spraying your hair with detangler and then creating a braid much tighter less loose hair sticking out of the braid so to speak which is going to give you a much smoother surface to print on uh like some of the higher quality shirts that are out there okay so i i, I, I love your I, analogy okay, i lost I, you I, that okay. translation I, I, I have to jump in as a girl dad times four. Roy, that was the best explanation you've ever given. And I've heard many of your explanations. So two thumbs up from this girl dad. I had to uh, jump in. Well done, it. my friend. Well done. And I have, <laughs> by the way, I have two more samples to show you that are really okay. going to highlight some of the errors that both of you talked about. So I'm going to jump back out so I can All share. All right, you these. got it. Okay. Go ahead and share those and we'll talk about those. Well, and you know, the great, the great thing about the analogies you do, Roy, is I know that sometimes that you, you get on the phone with a customer and they're just like struggling with, I don't quite understand what you're getting at, yeah. but an analogy yeah. like that, it's like, oh yeah, I get it. I understand yeah, completely. Exactly. That. <laughs> it's easy. Well, I try to come up with simple terms because if you really look at how shirts are manufactured or fabrics, it's very complex. I mean, it's not as cut and dry as most people think. And the manufacturer and the care that they put into it. You'll take Bella Canvas, for instance. They even have a YouTube video that all their shirts, or their not shirts, but their fabric is dyed and manufactured in California. And then they ship the bolts of fabric out to all the uh, facilities that actually convert it to an actual live blank. So uh, kudos to them for you know, having one facility to keep control of all that. That way they have the best product available. The color is not going to change from batch to batch, what have you as much because it's all made in one location. Roy, it looks like uh, Jay has put one of your examples up on the screen. No, this is actually a customer from the internet. Oh, okay. And this is just something that we could talk about to see what would cause something like this. Well, uh, this could be a combination of under pre-treating. Uh, we don't know the details of the fabric, which is nice on our Facebook group. It's great when customers are asking for help to put all the information, the manufacturer of the, the shirt, uh, what is the blend of the fabric, uh, that, and also what did they use as far as pre-treat, uh, settings, uh, heat press and how much pre-treat they applied. But looking at this shirt uh, could be the fabric itself, just giving you a hard time, could be not adequate pre-treat, or it could be that I under cured it and it was still moist in some areas, allowing some of that white ink to penetrate into the fabric. So the first thing is whatever I'm using, I need to stay consistent. So. But what I always tell customers, again, in training, don't allow your customer to dictate to you what you're going to sell. If you have a process, it's like if I have a diesel engine in my car, am I going to go put regular gas in it? No, because it's going to ruin my engine. Just that if one I'm time. If I'm doing a process here <laughs> and I'm selling that process to my clients, I'm going to tell them, this is what I can provide you, okay? 
something this nice, not something you're typically going to get silk screened, and then turn around and let them tell you what shirt you're going to print on. Okay. You want to say, this is what I can provide. These are the products that I've tested that work well, and it's going to give me exceptional quality. And these are the colors that I'm going to offer you. And I can tell you nine times out of 10, most customers are going to conform to that and say, oh, great. I love that. I'll take this size, this style, and that color. And then well, that way, go ahead. I, I was just going to say that, you know, DTG printing is only, it's less than 20 years old. A lot of what we do when we're talking to our customers is educating our customers on what we are capable of accomplishing for them. And I, I think uh, more uh, owners out there uh, come to realize that, that a lot of this is education to the customer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. And it's like your silk screeners that buy this machine. You know, it's typically not something that I would want to buy to just do five or 10 of something that's just two colors, because that's not going to give me the profitability model that I need for this part of my business. So I always tell silk screeners, if you're into DTG, use it as a a tool to expand what you can provide your customers, giving them something that you typically can't silk screen and say, hey, I can even do this quality, this type of work uh, and be able to provide something better. Uh, and actually, these types of designs are more and more popular today than your your typical silk screen design. So, you know, silk screen has its place. Uh, DTG has its place as well. And they're completely different products. Well, Roy, it looks like Jay has given us an example now of a print mm -hmm. that possibly has the measles. I'm not sure what the... <laughs> yeah. Again, this could just be something that has a lot of contaminants and the customer didn't provide, again, what product it was and his process. So just looking at it on our Facebook group and guessing, uh, inadequate pre-treat could be a Teflon sheet causing that issue. The other thing is, is running too hot of a temperature on your cures too, thinking that you're going to speed up the process uh, can cause a degradation in your, your uh, pre-treat as well. So especially with a Teflon sheet, the hotter it gets, the more it has the opportunity to boil on the fabric level because that moisture isn't escaping out of the heat press and allowing that fabric to dry. Right. So in this, this scenario too, uh, the boiling of the ink, if they use Teflon on that shirt, then maybe uh, contributing to that problem as well, wouldn't you think? Yeah, that's, uh, I guess we're going to have a webinar soon about that and after effects of, of different issues that uh, come up on the curing end of the ink, getting white speckles in your image and what causes that or little tiny circles that start appearing. Oh my God, my print looks so perfect coming out of the printer and then I cured it and it just looked like, like hell afterwards. I mean, there's a few things that contribute to that and then we're gonna do that on a different webinar. You know, Roy, and, and I love what you said about if when you post something on our Facebook group, and, and that's a great area to go and talk to other users, but mm -hmm. uh, give us as much information as you possibly can, you know, to tell us what yeah. settings you use, tell us what garment you use, tell us what preacher you used, and it, it's going to be so much easier for you and, and also the other folks that, that go on there and generously offer their mm -hmm. advice, uh, the more information they have also when it's uh, it's it's Sunday night and you've yeah. got an order that's got to go up Monday morning and you're on there saying, hey, what am I doing wrong? That's a, the, the more info, the better, wouldn't you say? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And we have some uh, veterans on our Facebook group. The one thing to keep in mind, and some people may look at it and say, well, it's not that big of a group. It's growing every day. We're adding people every day, but we turn people away every day as well. We're not allowing any dealers uh, it's all just for the community. It's for U.S.-based customers only, whether you purchase from us or not. Uh, so that way, anything that's talked about in that group can be readily avail available to anyone in that group, okay? Uh, that way, it's not like someone in Europe talking about something you can only get in Europe. Uh, we don't have to sit there and try to figure all that stuff out, plus the time difference. Um, I'm on there constantly contributing. Jay's on there. I know once in a while you'll get up on there, Terry. So, you know, we're out there trying to do the best we can to 
help out, but it's a great resource after hours and weekends and things like that. And I tell customers, you know, that we train, definitely join the group and you'll kind of get a feel for it. And people actually do a good job of sharing their successes as well. Exactly. Look what I just printed on yes, this product. Yes, yes. Uh, look I, at this I new thing I just posts. decided to print on. Uh, I had someone the other day printing uh, canvas patches and sewing them onto a shirt. I mean, a hat. So, you know, there are a lot of cool things that you can do with DTG if you start thinking outside of the box, because it will print on a lot more products that are cotton related, like denim jackets, canvas uh, material, even a rough cut canvas that you can actually cut patches uh, for hats and things of that nature, which are becoming more and more popular. All right. Well, listen, Roy, I couldn't have said it better. And I just want to thank you both. Um, and, and a shout out really to that group. That group does well. And there's a lot of power users, as you said, that are very, very willing to share some of their techniques. Um, it's a yeah. closed group. You do have to ask to join. And there's a few simple questions. I'm always surprised when people pass on the questions and then wonder why we didn't let them join. Um, so <laughs> it's, it's, it's simple things like we, we promise not to abuse the group and spam yeah. everybody. That's primarily what we want you to agree to. Yeah. I can't in all honesty. We're trying to push products <laughs> on someone, you know, exactly. because we're going to talk about the pre-treat issue. That's been one of the pet peeves is what pre-treats best. So we definitely did a lot of testing and uh, we're going to be doing a webinar soon and go through the results of those tests. And we, of we just had somebody asking the factory pre-treat. Yeah, thanks, Roy. We just had somebody ask. The group's name is Epson F2100 DTG and DTF Users Group. So I know that's long, but it's specific for a reason. Epson F2100 DTG and DTF Users Group. And so everyone that's in there is an actual owner. They're not there to sell their equipment. We bounce those posts very quickly. If somebody tries to sneak in just to sell their, you know, used something i'm not even going to say mm -hmm. um yeah. so guys you did an amazing job first of all thank you again the samples were very enlightening instructional um i i if it's okay with you just want to end with this um this last one was crazy roy thanks for for explaining that there could be multiple scenarios with this mm -hmm. particular print this was the one that everyone was like oh my gosh what happened yeah. um so sometimes that testing process is so important and that's, again, a shout out to you and the rest of our training staff. Could the be the pre-treat nozzle, too, causing that problem. See, you I didn't never even know. think of that. Yeah, it's <laughs> clogged up or something. Splattering so all over the shirt. So <laughs> too little, too little, too much. Um, but, but being able to know that um, you and the other technicians that we have um, have seen a lot of these curveballs, right? So you're not... Uh -huh. You're not going to be blown out when somebody shares this and goes, what? We just we don't this? just print on the most, uh, uh, I guess, the highest quality shirts. We get samples <laughs> from all the manufacturers. So we print on anything. And when I train, if the customer says, hey, I only have Gildan, I'll say, hey, I, we're up for a challenge. Let's go ahead and make it happen. <laughs> you know, I'll get that shirt to print well, I whether that. I have to pre-treat it twice or not. You know, that's a, uh, for another story. And I guess since we're on the subject of pre-treat, uh, we'll, we'll discuss that real quick. And why do people pre-treat a Gildan twice? And that's something I see all the time. That's because it came from a country that has oil or wax residuals in it. And when you pre-treat it the first time and I, I get mean, it I get on this heat press at that temperature, that, that steam, steam breaks, breaks down that oil and wax a little bit. So when I pre-treat it again, it's a little bit more receptive to an even lay down of pre-treat and gives me a better print. And that goes off of, hey, I just printed 20 shirts. I just went to my 25th or whatever, 21st, and it looks like hell. Something happened. You know, what's going on with my equipment? It turns out, look at the label on the shirt, came from a different country. Let's pre-treat that one twice to see what happens. Hey, looks a lot better. Not, still not as good as the other one from, say, Nicaragua or El Salvador. Uh, it came from Haiti. So Haiti's a bad place for some of these shirts to come from as far as the dye and chemicals they use there. So, And there's a lot of other countries as well. So I also, I also anyway. want to jump in here, Terry, and tell you this. You didn't know this, but <laughs> we tried to replicate a whole bunch of these mistakes and we were using cotton heritage shirts and we practically couldn't do it. 
because <laughs> the shirts- even under pre-treating, I was having a hard time getting a crappy print. So, you know, and so, what can I tell you? I wanted to end on that because there were a few questions. So yes, we are fans of all of the brands. There are some favorites yeah. in there, but the truth be told, we have had consistent results for multiple years now. And our best friend, continues to be the cotton heritage line we don't get anything for saying that if there was a better line we would yeah. be promoting that one um yeah. yes they are friends yes well, you know, they'll occasionally send us we, we, so we, we can them. say but, that in i was gonna say in this day and age you, you definitely got to have your backups with all the containers sitting out there in the ocean so good point. if you're really looking at the top four as far as quality right out of the box uh, Sanmar has done a great job with the district products. Uh, not everything prints perfect, but they're 100% cotton, perfect weight, great printing shirt. Next level is a great product. We all know Bella Canvas, I brought them up. A lot of people like to use those. I mean, those are probably the four core products that most DTG users that are veterans are using one of those four. But you typically need to have at least two uh, in your uh, arsenal right now with the shipping issues. So, you know, make sure you dial in two products that you're going to be using moving forward. And again, at the end of the day, if I try to save a buck on a shirt, uh, pulling my hair out like uh, and end up looking like Terry there, uh, you're not going to be happy. So <laughs> hey. definitely want to uh, go with a higher quality shirt because you'll spend that dollar difference in pre treated ink to even get that shirt to look good. So at the end of the day, are you saving money? Is your customer forcing you to provide a product, saving you money and time? Uh, not really. So love it. All right. Well, you can see the key contact information up. That's our last slide. Uh, so okay. reach out to Terry or Amy or Tim. And as Roy so well stated many times, you can also reach out to us from our webpage. Uh, please, if you have a specific issue, I would recommend that you start a tech ticket from our support line on the online, uh -huh. visit our webpage, go there. Um, you may get, get a response from somebody in New Jersey. It may come from, um, uh, from, from Roy himself or from others. Um, and so, uh, yeah, that's, that's our webinar for today. Terry, appreciate your time. Well done moderating. Mr. Roy Huseman, great to have you. Thank you for explaining all of these uh, uh, potential missteps and uh, great solutions. So thrilled okay. that you're here and pay attention, kids. We will have more <laughs> sessions like yeah. this. Uh, and the, the video the will be up on YouTube in a couple yeah. days. But she wanted to recap. So we got our Cotton Heritage, the District, from Sanmar, Bella Canvas, and Next Level are the top four products that I typically see out there for most customers. So, excellent. All, All right, Roy, and thanks everybody for tuning in. It's been another great webinar from Equipment Zone, and we will catch you on the other side. Take care, everybody. Be safe. All right. Thank you. Bye.